This is the Hope Botanical Gardens where you, your family and friends can come and relax and enjoy nature any day of the week. That's exactly what I'm doing as I walk you through this Ash Wednesday edition of Jamaica Magazine. Hi, I'm Audrey Williams. Thanks for tuning in. If inspiring stories are your thing, then you've got to stick around. Coming up, not one but two features looking at creating jobs for citizens. We head over to one inner city school to showcase how students are learning to serve and Ash Wednesday traditions are explored. All that and more after the break. Join the fight. Quit smoking for life. It's good to just chill and relax in places like these. You want to know something else that will put your mind at ease? Having a job that will help you to enjoy life's comforts. There are many ongoing efforts right now to ensure that as many of us as possible enjoy that opportunity. The Porsche Simpson Miller led administration has been achieving economic growth and facilitating job creation through some focused actions. One key government body, the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining, has recorded initiatives to confirm this. To facilitate economic growth and create jobs, the Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining has been putting some important programs into action. These include the Trade Compensation Mechanism of the Petro-Caribbean Agreement, the Rare Earth Pilot Project and the Training of Young Persons in Science and Technology. Under the Trade Compensation Mechanism of the Petro-Caribbean Agreement, Jamaica is to supply Venezuela with 100,000 tons of clinker, valued at approximately 8.5 million US dollars between December 2013 and April 2014. The clinker is shipped to Venezuela by Carib Cement Company to go towards Jamaica's oil loan under the Petro-Caribbean Agreement. The Jamaican government pays Carib Cement for the shipment but benefits by helping to stimulate increased local production and job creation. Already, the trade compensation mechanism has allowed Carib Cement to expand its plant and employ more persons. We now have on a full-time basis 45 women of this constituency who are now employed at Carib Cement. I was just advised that there is a program for the men and that 10 of our men will receive employment as well. So again, 55 persons will be benefiting. The arrangement also opens the door for increased export and trade opportunities for Jamaican products into new markets. I would like to urge other Jamaican manufacturers to access this trade compensation mechanism so that more Jamaican goods and services will enter the Venezuelan market. Bauxite is another area that the government is positioning in a strong way to stimulate economic growth and create jobs. Through a relationship forged with the Japanese firm Nippon Light Metal, research is now underway at a newly constructed pilot plant for the extraction of rare earth elements from red mud. This will put Jamaica in the position to produce and export byproducts of bauxite, earning for itself huge foreign exchange. Rare earth oxides, Mr. Speaker, the commodity that will be extracted, are currently being traded at rates up to 3,500 US per kilogram. Mr. Speaker, when you compare what we get per ton for our alumina, that's about $330. 
you can see that it is clear that this resource presents an opportunity Jamaica must pursue and which must be managed in such a way that Jamaica and our people benefit significantly. Already, Jamaican engineers and other workers are employed on this project and the country stands to benefit from the transfer of the knowledge. Plans for full commercialization of the pilot plant means that these jobs will be secure and more opportunities should arise with the addition of a new industry. Today, several industries are critically dependent on the supply and availability of rare earth elements. Chief among them, the electronics and ICT industry. The plan is not just to extract the oxide and send it away, but to get the value-added products as far down as we can in Jamaica, which would mean more jobs for Jamaicans, more industries, more support services um, that would support a brand new industry, which would be adjunct to the um, oxide and alumina industry. Therefore, the government of Jamaica perceives the extraction of rare earth elements that are present in Jamaica to be an exciting new opportunity to earn much needed foreign exchange and to create jobs. The multi-million dollar rare earth elements extraction pilot project is being spearheaded by the Jamaica Bauxite Institute and the Japanese entity. The training of young minds to create their own jobs, becoming entrepreneurs and contributing to the growth of the economy is a key focus of the Science and Technology Ministry. During the 2013-2014 financial year, the Ministry has been holding several training workshops to encourage Jamaicans to draw on their creative gene and come up with innovations that will transform into viable business opportunities. Through initiatives such as Digital Jam 2.0 in 2013 and the current Digital Jam 3.0, persons have been receiving guidance in the development of technical ventures such as mobile apps. When we looked at where we would focus, we felt that the mobile apps market was, is a low-hanging fruit and something that in Jamaica with all the talent that we have, that we could exploit in a way that would provide for these youngsters an opportunity to earn foreign exchange and to build businesses of their own. It's harder, I would say, to track how much money people are making because people tend not to share that information, but certainly we have metrics which indicate that a large number have actually gone online and are using these platforms. Government is also getting ready to distribute 30,000 tablets in school during the new academic year, which means more young people are being equipped to tap into the huge technological opportunities available globally. The Ministry of Science, Technology, Energy and Mining, facilitating initiatives to create more jobs and contribute to economic growth. Christians appear between Ash Wednesday and Good Friday is a symbolic time known as Lent and it's filled with various traditions. If you've ever wondered where all these traditions came from, watch this. The persecution, the crucifixion and the resurrection, all reminders of the celebration of Easter. Although edged in controversy over the true origin of the dates, the events of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ are embraced mostly by Catholics, Lutherans, Methodists and Presbyterians. The tradition also continues with the Anglican, Eastern Orthodox and some non-denominational churches. It all starts with a day called Ash Wednesday. Derived from the Latin phrase dies cinerum, it means day of ashes. Per Catholic custom, on this day, a cross is marked on the believer's forehead in ashes, symbolizing one's belief in Christ. This marks the physical and spiritual beginning of the Lenten season. The importance of the practice of Lent in the early church was to prepare candidates for baptism. And Part of this was done through an alignment with the life of Christ, his 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. 
so his followers observe 40 days of repentance starting Ash Wednesday and ending Holy Saturday, the day before Easter Sunday. The Sundays in this period are not counted among the 40 fasting days. Ash Wednesday is usually dedicated as a time of fasting and the recital of penitential psalms. Traditional customs include the stages of the cross, with the priest stopping at each of 14 images depicting stages of the condemnation, crucifixion and resurrection of Christ. The Catholic Church is among those that wear special colors that are supposed to have biblical meaning, like red on Good Friday, signifying dying for Jesus through your faith in God. A more common practice among other Christian churches is the partaking of the Holy Communion as well as the 21-day fast which begins on Ash Wednesday. While some people decide not to eat anything all day, others just have bread and water. Some Christians also abstain from all meat on Ash Wednesday and all Fridays in Lent. But the relevance of this and many of the customs of Easter is a matter of dispute, even among those of the Christian faith. But if you look at the history, you would have discovered that it has a pagan concept. There's only one passage that is in Acts chapter 12 and verse 4, and it mentions the word Easter. However, that is in the King James Version. If you look at other newer versions, you'll find Passover, because your original word and the context will show you it says Passover. So there's no biblical support for it. Christian believers say the number 40 is a special number in the Bible that signifies preparation for something special, like the 40 days of rain that covered the land in a flood in the time of Noah, Moses' sojourn on Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, Jonah giving the people of Nineveh 40 days to repent. We see how when Jonah eventually responded to God's entreaty to go to the Ninevites, and he preached to the Ninevites immediately from the king all the way to a little child. They donned ashes and sackcloth and repented of their sins. Then there was Jesus' 40 days in the desert in prayer and fasting before he began his ministry. This is said to have prepared Jesus for his work on earth and it is believed that this practice purifies by weaning men from sin and selfishness. This is essentially it, to be the body and the blood of Jesus Christ in the world. The aim, the objective of all that we do in our worship, in our prayer, in our self-sacrifice is to become another Christ. And when the church becomes truly this, the church makes a saving impact upon the world. But that ideal is not the bone of contention. By much of its symbolism and its position on the calendar, Easter is linked to the Jewish Passover and Exodus from Egypt recorded in the Old Testament. But Christians base much of their beliefs and practices on the reports of Jesus' Last Supper. Yet that foundation is contested by sources like the ecclesiastical historian Socrates of Constantinople, also known as Socrates Scholasticus, and not to be confused with the Greek philosopher Socrates. Socrates Scholasticus attributes the observance of Easter simply to the church's attempts to perpetrate its customs, insisting that neither Jesus nor his apostles endorsed this or any other such festival. But despite opposing views that there is neither biblical nor historical record of Jesus, the apostles or the early church's participation in Lenten season, Christians are holding fast to the tradition and strongly believe it still has its significance today. Still, they are not united on the date. You'd have to go back from about, say, the third century. It started the practice and was fully canonized with the Council of Nicaea. That is AD 325, the Constantine. And they sort of gave credence to it. By the time you got to the 8th century, it was already fully established. So coming down to us, they'd have lost whatever concept it had before, because there was no biblical support for it. But by the time it comes to us now, it's well entrenched. So everybody seems to answer and believe in what we call the Easter story. Using the Gregorian calendar, 
Christian churches in the West celebrate Easter on the first Sunday following the full moon after the vernal equinox on March 21. Easter is therefore observed anywhere between March 22 and April 25 every year. The Eastern Orthodox and most Oriental Orthodox churches retained the Julian calendar, typically celebrating the holiday a week or two after the Western churches. So the Czech church's perspective on whether it's Lent or seeing Lent as the renewal of the life of human beings is placed within worship itself. And for us, that worship takes place on a daily basis. We have no problem with that because we accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ and his atonement for us. What we don't believe in, it is the Easter celebration that takes place. In Holy Scripture, there is this constant call, constant reminder that our lives are out of sync with God, with what God expects of us. And so we must constantly be in a state of renewal. Lent is a call to renewal. March 15. March 15. March 15. Employers, employees, and self-employed persons take note. March 15, 2014 is the deadline to file your income tax returns for 2013-2014. Visit your local tax office or get 24-hour access by registering online at jamaicatax-online.gov.jm. Remember to use the correct form. Self-employed persons or persons with other sources of income should use the IT01 form. Individuals whose only income is taxed at source, for example, PAYE or withholding tax should use the IT05 form and those filing on behalf of companies should use the IT02 form. For more information, contact Tax Administration Jamaica's Customer Care Center at 1-888-TAX-HELP. That's 1-888-829-4357. Recently, we introduced you to a group of young men who are receiving training in practical skills at Up Park Camp. They've now received employment opportunities. Here's the story. The reality of not having any subject gave me little opportunities. And I started loading buses for two years. It was a risky job as some bus loaders got killed. But I knew it was a matter of survival, and I did not want to turn to the gun or get involved in a gang. However, I decided that attending art was my way out of poverty, as I would be able to secure a better life through education. Through the Citizen Security and the Justice Program, CSJP, Horace Bailey was later able to complete his studies. Levels 1 through 3 in electrical installation and industrial electrical maintenance at Skills Training Institution, Heart Trust NTA. But the story didn't stop there. CSJP gave me the opportunity of a lifetime when they decided to send over 400 youngsters on internship with the JDF, where I learned discipline, punctuality, teamwork, good work ethic, and was exposed to leadership training. Thank you, JDF and CSJP. Today, my story has changed. Yes, I can proudly say I am an intern with the James Jamaica public service company. From Lodeman to intern at the Jamaica Public Service JPS, just one success story from the CSJP, an initiative of the Ministry of National Security. CSJP is a crime and violence prevention initiative which builds the overall safety and security of communities. The program, which operates in over 50 communities across eight parishes, is geared towards developing the skills of unattached youth in volatile communities so they can support themselves and their family rather than turning to crime as an occupation. 
Since 2001, CSJP has provided educational and on-the-job training to over 8,700 inner-city youth. In 2012, CSJP, through a partnership with the Jamaica Defence Force JDF, began offering on-the-job training to over 400 youngsters. After receiving certification from Heart Trust NTA, the youngsters were able to develop their skills in vocational areas like construction, welding, auto mechanics and electrical engineering. Now, following another partnership, this time between the CSJP and the JPS, 20 of the then JDF interns, including Horace Bailey, will get another chance to further develop their skill set. The 20 interns will be spending six months at the JPS. Ten graduates will be placed within our losses teams that carry out customer audits. Six will be placed within our Kingston and St. Andrew field operations and four graduates will be placed within our transmission and distribution group. This partnership was cemented following the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding between the Ministry of National Security, JPS, and CSJP. National Security Minister Peter Bunting says the $5 million initiative fits in well with the Ministry's Unite for Change campaign, which also seeks to empower young people and keep them out of harm's way. Even six months of that experience, so gives them the script for, for their next opportunity that it can change um, you know, in a sort of paradigm shifting way the, their outlook on, and their employment uh, prospects. CSJP program manager Simeon Robinson has assured JPS that they are getting the cream of the crop. Look at their punctuality, look at their uh, their behavior, their attitude on the job, in tandem with the fact that they have achieved in their technical areas that you are getting 20 youngsters who are ready for the job market. Many of the JPS interns have similar stories to that of Horace Bailey. And after gaining a wealth of information from the CSJP JDF internship program, they intend to do well at the Light and Power Company. Right now, we, we are on our way to say you know, we are going up another ladder, another step on the ladder. So we have to just come together as a team because nothing can be a team. What I want to know, you help him up and let him come up there with you. I'm going to help him to do my best. Next thing, looking to meet with other people, get interacting, learn good more work ethics and other stuff. What I plan to take with me from the JDF going to the JPS, punctuality, which is going to work on time, the discipline, and good behaviors. Do my best. I'm not there to compete because a lot of us are, they are wonderful electricians, all of us. And we're not there to compete. We're just there to do our best, whatever task is given. From I'm a little kid in a miss. Always I look upon company like JPS, Petro Jam, them big company, and say, always I wonder if a day I could get a time to like even work over there. And now, getting six months at JPS in my field, going to make the best of it. The Ministry of National Security through the CSJP, changing the lives of inner city youth one day at a time. Why not join the initiative and support those involved? Join the JPS and other organizations to provide on the job training for these well trained young people and play your part in the Unite for Change campaign. Citizens coming together to empower persons to avoid a life of crime. While I'm enjoying my surroundings, here's Tamara McHale with a feature that's sure to make your heart swell with pride. I feel very happy because to be in this club, it's great because we help all the vulnerable. When we go to places like the Burn Ward, a children's home, and Mustard Seed, um, and giving the children gifts, we feel excited because 
we know that we're giving and we know that we're going to be leaders of tomorrow. A whopping 135 students, including 45 boys, have signed up to be a part of the Red Cross group at the DuPont Primary School. Today we find out how this inner city school is using this medium to engage the students while teaching them the value of giving back. Do stay with me. What a team team. Red Cross team team. Dressed in white with some already in their red hats and emblems was the newest set of students to join the Red Cross Corps at DuPont Primary. So large was the group that it's said to have made the history books within Red Cross in Jamaica. I don't recall a school having this number of persons enrolled in recent times. You are serving one another. So as you do that and you keep doing it, you will raise yourself to greater heights. So what does Red Cross uphold? It promotes mutual understanding, friendship, cooperation, and lasting peace amongst all people. It endeavors only to relieve suffering, giving priority to the most urgent cases of distress. We don't discriminate, we just help. You can do lots of things like go to the hospital, help the poor, and everything to give them, give them soap, food, things like that. We have a relationship with a school in Canada. Oftentimes, our school, to our principal, they send us gifts. They will sell us like wheelchair and those things. Now, our principal look on which club is doing well, and he will say, okay, do, um, Red Cross is doing well, so I'll give you this gift, and you, you distribute to whoever you want. Now, we have the homes, and we have the, 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 the hospital, and we have these places where we want to give. So we go, and we give it to them. Having such a large number of students enrolled in the club is in line with Education Minister Reverend Ronald Thwaites appeal for more students to become members of uniformed groups, a point supported by the school's chairman. This is a, certainly a good move. We want to get our children involved in something a little bit more than themselves. Organizations and activities where they are linked to giving service to humanity. And this is an example of that. A fine example of how to keep students active, engaged and disciplined. DuPont Primary is reaping the benefits. When they look on DuPont, Molding the children, the children are becoming, in giving, they become so conscious that I have potential. Oh, I'm wonderful. Oh, I can do things. I may be in a inner city, but the inner city is not in me. I am bigger than that. There's a place in your heart, and I know that it is love. And this place was brighter than tomorrow. And if you really try, there's no need to cry in this place feel there's no hurt or sorrow there are ways to get there if you care enough for the living make a little space make a better way dupont primary red cross linking together a community through the chain of service and friendship we
such a pity my time in this tranquil place is at an end. So too is our journey. But you can visit the gardens on your own, so make sure that you do. Make yourself a promise. When life gets hectic, you remain calm. Send us your thoughts, an email, a tweet. We're looking out for you. On behalf of the entire GIS team, be blessed. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.